Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue our look at exposure histograms. This will be part two of a three-part series. In part one we gave a basic introduction to histograms. In part two we're going to take a basic look of how to use histograms in conjunction with your exposure meter to come up with the best possible exposure. And in part three, we will look at the concept of exposing to the right and why that is a good idea. So let's get started with part two and take a look at how to use histograms in conjunction with your exposure meter for the best possible exposure. On the majority of digital cameras, even point-and-shoot cameras, you have the ability to set up your playback screen to be able to show not only the picture that you've taken but also a histogram. Sometimes this display screen will show only a brightness histogram, which is just a grayscale histogram. Other times you'll be able to show an RGB type of histogram. It really doesn't matter as both types of histograms will give you the same type of data. It's best to go into your camera menus or your instruction manual and find out how to set up your particular camera for this. In this video it's not possible to cover every possible different camera so either look in your camera manual or do a search on the internet how to set up your camera in order to show the histogram. If you have a mirrorless camera that uses a viewfinder you may even be able to set up to show the histogram prior to your actual exposure you'll be able to view the histogram in your electronic viewfinder. So look in your manual how to do that. Your camera histogram is best used in conjunction with your exposure meter. The exposure meter on modern cameras are very good and are designed to be able to accurately record the proper exposure for most scenes. Shown here on the screen is a coyote which has a very average tonal value throughout except for maybe the dark black background and we can see by the histogram that everything looks really non-spectacular and average. And for most of your photographs this is going to be the case. So whether you shoot in aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode or even in manual mode the histogram will be a very effective tool to be able to determine the accuracy of your exposure. When parts of the photographs such as very white whites and very black blacks are present, that's when the histogram really becomes a very useful tool to make sure that the whites are not blown out or completely pegged against the right hand side or the blacks are not completely blocked up or pegged against the left hand side. Shown on the screen now is a Siberian chipmunk that was photographed in the middle of the day and if we take a look at the photograph you can see that there are some bright portions that appear to be blown out and also some blacks of the eye that don't have any detail. If we look at the histogram we can see on the right hand side there is a white line on the far right which indicates those blown out areas down below the chipmunk and we can see that the, 
the left hand side has a line that's uh, showing the blacks of the eye that are completely blown out. This indicates that the dynamic range or the tonal values of this image are beyond what the camera was able to record during that part of the day. It just had too much tonal range to be able to record everything. The human eye has the ability to see far more than a camera sensor. You know, maybe in 10 years or so, camera sensors will improve and have a much better dynamic range. But as of right now, the camera sen sensors do not have the same dynamic range as the human eye. In a situation like this, it would be better to let some of the blacks go ahead and block up and to underexpose this image just a little bit so that the whites weren't completely blown out like you see underneath the ch chipmunk. If you're photographing in some sort of automated mode such as shutter priority, aperture priority, or program mode, you could use the exposure compensation and dial in maybe three quarters or a negative one in order to bring this histogram over to the left a little bit so that you don't have the blown out whites. If you're shooting in manual mode, simply adjust your exposure so that you bring your exposure reading down about three quarters of a stop to one stop until the, uh, until the histogram is not shown as blown out as it is here. There are sometimes you'll get a histogram which have some blown out highlights and it's really not a problem such as this sunset image here which has the sun as part of the image. Obviously when you have something that is that bright you're going to have some portions of it that are blown out and there's not really much you can do at an image like this as you can see the resulting histogram is already extending all the way from the left from the very darks and going all the way to the right and is pegged against the right hand side so there's no way that you could underexpose this any more than it already is and that's just a function of the dynamic range of the camera. Okay, let's get into the specifics of how to use your histogram in conjunction with your exposure meter. Shown on the screen is a bald eagle perched on a log and the bald eagle has a white head and there's also some white snow on the log and we don't want to blow out the whites. This is a scene that would commonly fool your exposure meter because of the bright whites, the sun shining on the head. It would not be unusual at all for your image to be completely blown out in the whites here. So a good thing to do with your camera is to take one picture and then to look at it on the back of your monitor paying particular attention to the right hand side. You want to make sure that the whites are not pegged against the white hand side, right hand side because if they were they would be blown out. You can see in this particular image in the histogram that the whites are not pegged against the right hand side. They're just slightly shy of it and the darks do go up and touch slightly on the on the left hand side which is really not a problem because some of those darks are part of the background back there the area back behind the log. So this is how you use your histogram you look at your scene and you determine what the critical parts of the scene are that you want to be recorded correctly you take an image you look at the histogram and then you dial in either exposure compensation to retain your whites or other types 
of adjustments to your shutter speed and your aperture to be able to properly record your scene so that the whites have details and your blacks have detail also. Here's another scene that would be very challenging for your camera exposure meter. We have a bald eagle that has a, a very dark body, a very white head, and we have a white background. So this would be another scene that your camera would typically overexpose and your whites would be blown out. As you can see by the histogram, the darks of the body make a peak on the left hand side and the whites of the head and the white of the background make peaks over on the right hand side. This would be another occasion where you would want to on like a DLSR take an image and then make adjustments either dialing in some negative compensation or some negative exposure to be able to properly record the whites on the head and as you can see by the histogram it is not pegged on the right hand side or on the left hand side for this particular image the dynamic range or the values, the tonal values, fit completely within the ability of the sensor to record. So what we've seen here in the video today is that average scenes are fairly easy for the camera to be able to record without any type of compensation, but when you get non-average scenes, in other words animals with very bright white head or a snow background or a cloudy background or very dark images, then it becomes much more challenging for your camera to be able to output the correct exposure and that's where you need to step in and to help your camera make the proper exposure by entering exposure compensation, either adding additional shutter speed, taking away shutter speed, opening up your aperture, closing down your aperture. All of these various types of adjustments will help you to record the scene so that your whites have detail and your blacks also have detail. When you get a scene like is shown here on the screen in which you have a very dark bird that has very white highlights, it becomes very challenging to get a correct exposure but with just a little bit of your own intervention you can come back with excellent images. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please ask any questions that you have down in the comments below and hit the like button if you like this video and please subscribe to my channel and we will see you for part three of this of this series in which we t t discuss exposure to the right and why it is important to expose to the right of the histogram. Thank you so much and I'll see you again soon.